Auzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hazreti Mehdi Maud aleyhisselam has pointed out many verses in the Quran which mention him and his community. One such verse is verse number 108 of Surah Yusuf. We will go through this verse in this video and try to understand it in light of Imam Mehdi aleyhisselam's claim. We'll first start with the introduction. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kul hazihi sabili adu ilallahi ala basiratin ana wa manit tabani wa subhanallahi wa ma ana minal mushrikeen. And the translation is Say, O Muhammad, this is my way. I invite towards Allah upon vision, I and the one who follows me, and glory to Allah, and never will I join gods with Allah. Note that Allah is commanding Prophet Muhammad sallallahu here by saying khul or say. So this entire statement is attributed to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Let us break up this verse and understand each part separately. Kul say, Hazihi sabili, this is my way. Adu, I invite ilallah towards Allah. Ala basiratin upon vision. Ana wa manitabani, I and the one who follows me. Wa subhanallahi wa ma ana minal mushrikeen. And glory to Allah and never will I join gods with Allah. This is our translation of the verse. When we compare this translation with other English translations, we find that all translations are more or less the same except for two words. Allah basiratin and Manitabani. We have translated Basiratin as vision and we have translated Manitabani as the one who follows me. Let us look at a few other translations and see how they have translated the word Basiratin and Manitabani. In the English translation of the Quran, the Noble Quran by Mohsin Khan and Takhiyuddin Hilali, the translation is, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is my way. I invite unto Allah with sure knowledge, I and whosoever follows me. So here, Basiratin has been translated as sure knowledge and Manitabani has been translated as whosoever follows me. The next translation which we see is from Sahih International. This is the translation used in Quran Musafs printed by the Saudi government. And the translation is say, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight, I and those who follow me. In this translation, Basiratin has been translated as insight and Manitabani has been translated as those who follow me. Next, we look at the clear Quran by Dr. Mustafa Khattab. This translation is quite popular nowadays. And he translates this as, Say, O Prophet, this is my way. I invite to Allah with insight, I and those who follow me. Here, Basiratin has been translated as insight, and Manitabani has been translated as those who follow me. And then we have the Holy Quran by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. 
This is a very old translation of the Quran written in classical English and was very popular with the previous generation. His translation is Say thou, this is my way, I do invite unto Allah on evidence clear as the seeing with one's eyes, I and whoever follows me. He translates Basirat as on evidence clear as the seeing with one's eyes and Manitabani as whoever follows me. This translation of Basirat is very close to our translation of vision. Let us compare our translation with other translations which we saw just now. Specifically the differences in the two words Allah Basiratin and Manitabani. The first is Allah Basiratin. We have translated it as upon vision. The other translators have translated as insight, sure knowledge, evidence as clear as seeing with one's eyes. The other translators of the Quran have shied away from using the word vision. The second word is Manitabani. We have translated it as the one who follows me. The other translators have translated as whosoever follows me, those who follow me, whoever follows me. Other than these two words, the rest of the text in all translations is the same. The main topic of discussion in this video is the man in Manitabani. Who is man in Manitabani? If you look at the dictionary meaning of man, it means who, which one, which ones, the one who, those who, whoever, whosoever, everyone who, he who. So it could be anybody or it could be a specific person. The Mufassirin say that man refers to common people, anybody, who follows Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Anyone who preaches and propagates Islam, the scholars, sheikhs, etc. This leads us to ask two questions: Can the man in Manitabani be an ordinary person, and does the man fit the personality of any scholar, sheikh? or preacher? To answer these questions, we need to dig deeper into the two phrases Allah Basiratin and Manitabani. Let us start with Allah Basiratin first. The word Basirat is derived from the root word Basara. Variations of the word Basara have different meanings. The word Basara itself means sight, vision, eyes. A variation of Basara is Basir. It means it refers to Allah, the all-seer, the all-seeing. Basair means enlightenment or evidence. And Basiratin the dictionary meaning is insight and discernment. So when we compare our translation with the other translations, we find this difference. The other translations have used the word insight, sure knowledge, on evidence clear as seeing with one's eyes for translating the word basiratin. And the Mahdaviya translation uses the word vision. So should we understand Basirat to mean vision or does it mean insight and sure knowledge? 
which translation and understanding of the word basirat is closest to the truth to answer that question let us look at the usage of the word basirat in another verse of the quran which is verse 15 of surah khiyama perhaps that verse will help us to understand this word more accurately verse 15 of surah khiyama is balil insanu ala nafsihi basira the quran is describing the scenario where on the day of judgment man will testify against himself that is he will give witness against himself for all the deeds that he did in this world so let's look at the different translations of this verse the first translation is rather man against himself will be a witness so here basiratun has been translated as witness the next translation is in fact people will testify against their own souls basiratun has been translated as testify oh but man is a telling witness against himself nay man will be a witness against himself as his body parts the skin hands legs etc will speak about his deeds so the words used here are witness telling witness and testify so the translation is rather man will be a witness against himself how does man become a witness man will be a witness against himself on the day of judgment because he has seen his actions with his own eyes he has directly and personally experienced all that he did with his body parts with his mouth his ears his hands his legs etc he knows first hand the good and evil thoughts which resided in his heart hence he will be a witness against himself so therefore basirat means witnessing with eyes with heart and with all body parts so if we now translate our words with this meaning it becomes i invite to allah upon basirat which means i invite to allah based upon a witnessing or vision of allah with the physical eyes and the eye of the heart so translating basirat to mean vision of allah is closest to the correct meaning and this translation is supported by verse 15 of surah khayama therefore the explanation of this part of the verse will become that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has had the vision of allah and has the certainty of an eyewitness and hence he is saying i invite to allah upon vision so this part of the verse can now be translated this way kul hazihi sabili adu ila allah ala basiratin ana wa man ittabani say o muhammad this is my way I invite towards Allah upon vision I and the one who follows me in other words I invite people towards the vision of Allah Now that we understand that the invite is towards the vision of Allah let us understand the word manitabani the one who follows me The key question here is who is the man in manitabani Mufassirin say it refers to common people anyone who follows prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and anyone who preaches and propagates Islam Hazrat Mahdi Maud alaihi salam said that the man in manitabani refers only to himself we can see here 
that one person is following, he is called the Tabe, the one who is following. And another person is leading or he is being followed. We call him the Matbu and that is the Prophet wasallam himself. At this juncture, let us look at a concept of Arabic grammar which has an impact on how we perceive this verse. The concept is called atf or conjunction. In the phrase ana wa manitabani, the wa which is joining the words ana and manitabani is called a harf atf. The words being joined are called matuf and matufilai. Grammatically, there should be parity and similarity between the matuf and matufalai. That is, there should be parity between ana and manitabani or between I and the one who follows me. If we apply the requirement of parity between matuf and matufilai, it would require the invite of the matuf to be the same as the invite of matufile that is the invite of the manitabani the one who follows me should be similar to the invite of ana that is the prophet that is the invite of the tabe the one who is following should be of the same status as the invite of the matbu the one being followed Otherwise, there will be a difference and disparity between the two invitations. So, by applying the atf, the sentence would now read as follows. I invite towards Allah upon vision. That is, the Prophet wasallam is inviting towards Allah upon vision. And the one who follows me will also invite towards Allah upon vision. Which leads us to the obvious question. Which follower of the Prophet ﷺ has invited people towards the vision of Allah? Has any common Muslim, be it a scholar, a sheikh, sheikh al-Islam, any preacher, ever invited people towards the vision of Allah? And the answer is never. And if we ask the same question with respect to Mahdi alayhi salam, has Mahdi alayhi salam invited people towards the vision of Allah? The answer is yes. And that was the purpose of his advent. Let us now read what Mahdi alayhi salam himself said. It is reported that Hazrat Mahdi Maud said, Allah commands me that the man in Manitabani is specific and its purport is only yourself and not anyone else. Hazrat Mahdi invited people towards the vision of Allah in this world with physical eyes. He said, We have been sent only for the vision of Allah. Otherwise, what was the need of our being sent? So, after understanding the words Allah Basiratin and Manitabani, we are now clear that the man in Manitabani cannot be an ordinary man, and he certainly has to be Hazrat Mahdi Maud as told by the Imam salam himself. This fact will be even more apparent when we dig deeper into the meaning of another word in this verse, which is Adu or I invite. The verse is Kul Hazihi Sabili Adu Ilallahi. That is, say, This is my way. I invite. Note that these are the words of 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Adu, I invite. So the question is, what is the nature of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's invitation? What is the characteristic and the sum and substance of his invitation? We need to understand this so that we can compare the invite of his follower, the Tabe, and determine if the follower can be an ordinary person or he has to be a special person. The nature of Prophet Sallallahu invitation. The first question is, why is he inviting? He is inviting because he has been appointed for the task by Allah Ta'ala. He is Mamur Min Allah for that task. Question, is he inviting out of his own initiative and accord? No, he was appointed messenger and sent towards people only for this task, to invite people towards Allah. Inviting people is his obligatory duty. Question, can he choose the time and place of the invite? No. He is duty bound in all situations and circumstances to invite people. This duty is perpetual. He is not excused from this duty irrespective of time, place or circumstance. And it is not left to his discretion or his decision, his will and wish to invite when he wishes and not invite when he does not want to. He is subservient to Allah's wish and command. His condition is described in the verse nor does he speak from his own inclination. Question. Can he choose who he wishes to invite? No. It is obligatory upon him to go to different places and convey the message of Allah irrespective of whether the listeners are friends or enemies. Now, We'll ask the question, what is the nature of the invitation of a common man who could be a scholar, a sheikh, or any preacher? Question, is he appointed by Allah for this purpose? No, he is not appointed by Allah for the task of inviting people. He is not a mamur min Allah, that is, inviting people is not an obligation of his position. He invites people towards Islam in his own capacity, out of his own interest, based on knowledge gathered from others, and it is not an obligation attached to his position. This is true of all Muslims who preach and propagate religion. An Imam, a Mufassir, a Shaykh al Islam, etc., none of them have this obligation to invite people towards Allah based on their position. Question Is this a perpetual duty for a common Muslim who is preaching and propagating Islam? No, he can leave the task of inviting people whenever he wishes. He can choose the time, place, and people for his invitation. So, can he be a perfect follower tabe, of the Prophet? No. He will follow the Prophet in some matters and fall short in some matters. He is not free from erring and hence he is not a perfect follower. Question. What does the common Muslim call towards? A common Muslim preacher invites towards the commands of Allah like prayers, fasting, zakat, hajj, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil, etc. In this verse, the Prophet is inviting towards Allah, not just towards the commands of Allah. And there is a world of difference between the two invitations. So the conclusion is, are these two invitations equal? No, invitation of a common Muslim 
cannot be equal to the invitation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Having established that a common Muslim does not fit into the definition of Mani Tabani, the follower, we have to ask, what should be the required characteristic of the Mani Tabani or the Tabe, the one who follows? The first is that the Tabe should be one who is appointed for the task by Allah Ta'ala, that is, he should be Mamur Min Allah. Inviting people should be his obligatory duty. He should be duty bound in all situations and circumstances to invite people. This duty is perpetual. He is not excused from this duty irrespective of time, place or circumstance. And he should be free from erring like his madbu, the one who is followed which is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So who is the follower of Prophet Sallam who meets this criteria? After Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is only one person in the Ummah who fulfills these criteria of invitation. And that person is Hazrat Mahdi Maud Alaihi Wasallam. Let us look into the details of how Mahdi Salam fulfills this criteria. What does the Prophet Salam say about the status and stature of Mahdi Salam? The Prophet Salam said, The Mahdi is from me. He will follow my footsteps and he will not err. The Mahdi's character will be the same as my character. He will complete the religion in the same way as it began with us. The Mahdi is Khalifatullah. Therefore, what is the nature of the invite of Mahdi salam? He is appointed by Allah for inviting people. He is free from erring, he is Masum Anil Khata, he is a Khalifatullah, he is a Tabe Tam, a perfect follower of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is the Khatimul Vilayate Muhammadiyah, that is the seal of the sainthood of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hazrat Mahdi salam invited people towards the vision of Allah in this world. He said that it is an obligation on every man and woman to desire the vision of Allah or talab e didar khuda Many of his followers achieved the vision of Allah in this world. We have analyzed three different parts of this verse. Adu'u, Allah Basiratin, and Manitabani. And in every part, we concluded that the man in Manitabani cannot be an ordinary person. And we have seen that the man is a special person, and the same is confirmed by the claim of Hazrat Mahdi Maud alayhi salam that the man in Manitabani refers to him only. And now we come to the last part of the verse. Subhanallah wa ma ana min al mushrikeen. The translation is, and glory to Allah, and I am not from the mushrikeen. Let us keep in mind that it is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Who is saying these words based on how this verse started where Allah said Kul, say O Muhammad so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying and glory to Allah and I am not from the Mushrikeen let us also note a narration of Mahdi Alaihi Salam 
regarding this part of the verse. A few moments before he passed away, Hazrat Mahdi salam recited this verse and explained it. Then he recited the last part of the verse, Glory be to Allah, I am not from the Mushrikeen. Then he said, We both are not from the Mushrikeen or idolaters. The points to ponder are Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam who is the greatest proponent of Tawheed is saying that I am not from the Mushrikeen. The question is why is Allah conveying these words through the holy tongue of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What kind of shirk is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam talking about? The man who fought against idol worship his entire life is saying, I am not from the Mushrikeen, I am not from the idolaters. While this statement is true, he is stating the obvious and that is most unexpected from the Prophet and it makes you wonder if there is something more to it. And lastly, why did Mahdi say, we both are not from the Mushrikeen. These are questions to ponder about for now. Inshallah, we may address these questions in a future video. With this, we come to the end of this video. Before we wrap up, let us go through the words and the translation one last time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Pul hazihi sabili. Adu ilallahi ala basiratin ana wa manitabani wa subhanallahi wa ma ana minal mushrikeen. Say, O Muhammad, this is my way. I invite towards Allah upon vision or the vision of Allah in this world. I and the one who follows me perfectly, that is the Mahdi alayhi salam, he too will invite. And glory to Allah, and never will I join gods with Allah. Thank you for watching this video.